In this video, we are going to talk about various components that are used in embedded system. Embedded system components. An embedded system is a combination of hardware and software components to perform a specific application. For example, if I want to design a remote control for controlling machines or probably crane following will be the components. Transmitter, microcontroller, actuators as buttons, RF trans receiver as wireless communication, E square prom for storing configuration data such as crane ID or key information, fuel gauge for battery status, LCD display for showing signal strength, user menu, etc. At receiver, microcontroller, relay for controlling crane movement, E square prom for storing configuration data such as crane ID, RF trans receivers for wireless communication. An embedded system has software designed to keep in view of three constraints availability of system memory, availability of processor speed, the need to limit power dissipation when running the system continuously in cycles of wait for events, run, stop and wake up. Real-time operating system, it supervises the application software and provides a mechanism to let the processor run a task as per scheduling and do the switching from one task to another task. Let's talk about processor role in embedded system. One thing all embedded system have in common is that they include some type of processor. The range anywhere from a serial program input device to an OTP, one time programmable microcomputer to a full-fledged PC on a chip or board. At some point, an engineer decides on the type of processor to be used. Why did he pick it? And there any national for picking one over the other? Or are all processor selection based on personal bias? But if you could select any processor at all for a product, which would you choose? How would you make that selection? Following checklist might help in evaluating your needs. How much program and data space, including stack and heap, will you need? Right processor selection is key for successful system design and should keep in mind the software overheads for high level languages, operating systems, and heavily loaded interrupts as they tax the processor. The overall cost of a processor is not just the chip. How much power does it consume? Heat sinks required. Space on PCB required. The other support chips required. What is the availability and delivery time? All these must be answered before selection is made. Elements of an embedded system Processor, heart of the embedded system, is the central processing unit or processor. It is the hardware that executes the software and brings life to the embedded system. It also controls the activities of all the other circuits. There are varieties of processors available for the embedded systems. And the main criteria for selection is, can it provide the enough processing power required to perform the task within the system? ASIC, Application Specific IC, ASIC. FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array. PAL, Programmable Array Logic. Can be used to develop custom logics. The memory is used to store the software that the processor will run. It also provides storage for the data such as program variables, intermediate results, status information, and any other data generated throughout the operation. 
the memory is an important part of any embedded system as it dictates how the software will be designed, written and developed. An embedded system communicates with the outside world through peripherals. The main type of peripherals that are used include digital input and outputs. These are simple external pins whose logic state can be controlled by the processor to either be a logic 1 or a logic 0. They can also be used as input pins so that the processor can receive binary inputs from the external world. They can be used individually or grouped together to create parallel ports or centronics. Serial interface UART I2C RS232 CAN These are interfaces that sends or receive data using one or two pins in a serial mode. They are less complex to connect but are more complicated to program because the data may also be argumented with additional information as required by the data transfer protocol. Analog to digital converters. While processors operate on the digital data, the surrounding world is analog in nature. Therefore, interfaces between the system and the external world requires analog to digital conversion and vice versa. Hard disk, memory, sound system, video system and so on. Talk to the processor using the computer's bus as a communication path. Peripheral Component Interconnect PCI VME Versa Module Europa Bus R Standard Bus con Computers Clocks The CPU needs a clock source to synchronize the events. A crystal oscillator generates the clock. The crystal is chosen based on the clock frequency of the processor. Microcontroller provides on-chip oscillator and can be connected to external crystal or ceramic resonator as well. The purpose of an RTC or real-time clock is to provide precise time and date which can be used for various applications. It is powered by an internal lithium battery as a result of which even if the power of the system is turned off, the RTC clock keeps running. Embedded system software. Uh, typically, the software is written in high level C, C++ programming language and then compiled down into a form that is contained within the non-volatile memory of the system called firmware. Software debug, JTAG, ICE, ROM emulator, necessary tool to debug the embedded system. Design choice. Any embedded application of integrated circuit seeks to minimize simultaneously four factors. The number of transistors employed, which impact die, packet size, unit cost, and power consumption. The transistor count remains an important metric of system efficiency. The number of clock cycles required, which impacts the performance and power consumption. Fewer clock cycles, less power utilization. Time taken to develop the application, which strongly influences its market acceptance. A product that misses its time to market is a total loss of development effort. In many cases, software development takes more time and cost than the hardware development. NRE Non-Recurring Engineering Cost Mask is the transparency that allows light to shine through in a defined pattern to create IC. There is one 
mask per IC layer. There is high end cost in making mask. Set of mask example 8 layers 35 to 50 nm may cost as high as 1 million US dollar approx. The increased NRE costs with leading edge process technologies are putting these out of reach for many applications. Technologies exist to address these requirements are microcontrollers, MCUs are general purpose devices for information processing and control that can be adapted to a wide variety of application by adding software. Application development effort is limited to software development and validation. Hence, NRE costs are amortized among all the users of the MCU architecture. Clock cycle optimization is determined by code optimization and the code footprint influences the number of transistors required for memory. Digital signal processor DSPs hardwired the basic functions of many signal processing algorithms. The op this optimizes transistor use and clock cycles for the required operations at the expense of flexibility. Code is simpler than that required for MCUs. DSP is an optimal solution for applications requiring signal processing. Many MCUs include basic DSP operations in their instruction set. Application specific instruction processor ASIP which enables them to do simple signal processing without the need for a dedicated DSP. Field programmable gate arrays FPGAs limit development effort to the coding required to configure them and share NRE costs amongst a very large users at the expense of a high level of transistor redundancy and therefore high unit cost and a limited optimization of clock cycles. Power consumption is far more optimal. A chip that is custom designed for a specific application rather than a general purpose chip such as a microprocessor, the use of ASICs improve performance over general purpose CPUs because ASICs are hardwired to do a specific job and do not incur the overhead of fetching and interpreting stored instructions. However, ASIC may include one or more microprocessor core and embedded software to make a complete system on chip SOC. This optimizes the number of transistors and clock cycles at the expense of development time and NRE cost that are higher than those for MCUs, DSPs or FPGAs. ASIC can be very cost effective for many applications where volumes are high. Heterogeneous processor used for massively parallel programmability. CPU, GPU, heterogeneous design has been widely used in the design of desktop computing processor and mobile SOCs. By merging CPU and GPU onto single chip, it is possible for heterogeneous processor to handle traditional serial tasks as well as certain types of parallel workloads such as mathematically intensive computations on very large data set. Nivida, Tegra series is another well-known SOC for mobile devices. It is the first mobile SOC which integrates a multi-core ARM CPU alongside with 
desktop level GPU unit onto one die. Advantage, low power consumption, higher performance per watt, faster web pages load times with the help of hardware accelerators, higher performance for GPU demanding applications, higher quality game experience. Driving factor. As our brain contains around 100 billion cells called neurons, the tiny switches that let us think and remember things. Computers contain billions of miniature brain cells as well. They are called transistors and they are made up from silicon, a chemical element commonly found in sand. Transistors have revolutionized electronics. According to Moore's law, IC transistor capacity has doubled roughly every 18 months for the past several decades. Modern Core IBM Storage Controller at 7.1 billion transistors with 480 MB L4 cache. Intel's 18 core Xeon Haswell EP with 5.5 billion transistors. Zlinks currently holds the world record for FPGA containing more than 20 billion transistors.